Welcome back, dudes. In this episode, we're going to hurt some feelings, and that is okay because facts over feelings. Riding off trail doesn't hurt anything. This is a very unpopular opinion to have in the snowmobile communities online. Uh, you will get people complaining about people who go off trail all the time. And the reason they say that it's such a bad thing to do is that it damages the ground, it damages crops. That's, that's not true. The reason that they're actually asking you to stay on the trail is for, like most things in America, due to money. In this case, legal concerns. If you ride on someone else's private property and you get hurt, that is the reason that they want you to stay on the trail, which I am all for, okay? But I'm sick of people lying about this. The other thing that people say is that it damages the ground. Now that is also not true. The average person, like me, just walking down a snow-covered path right here exerts five pounds per square inch under my feet. Average snowmobile, half a pound, okay? So like, we're talking like, what is that? One-tenth the amount of pressure on the ground? Because what people say is that the snowmobiles compact the snow to the point where in the spring crops can't go up through it. That's just bullshit. I, I live in uh, central Wisconsin. Right now we are in the woods, which is awesome but I am surrounded by farmland. And I can tell you, I know where the snowmobile trails are. They're pretty well-traveled most seasons. And in spring, there is no difference. It, in midsummer, there's no difference. There's, there's also trails nearby that are not legal. They ride um, in some farmer's field along the very edge, respectfully, to get to the trail. I use one to get to the trail network myself. And the reason we're doing that is because the ditch has a bunch of culverts. If you're riding in the ditch, um, you can tear your skis off. It's a little more dangerous because it's at an angle. We choose to ride on the edge of this farmer's field for safety, okay? And every spring, I think, you know what? I wonder if this field was damaged by snowmobiling. It wasn't. So this is admittedly anecdotal evidence. I don't want you to take my word for it because again, facts over feelings, right boys? So it turns out there's actually been a ton of environmental studies done on the impact of snowmobiles to the environment. What did they find? Nil. Don't believe me? Link down below, read it and weep. Now I'm not talking about one isolated snowmobile study. I mean like many studies done over decades by universities to study the impact of snowmobiling on the environment. And they all pretty much say the same thing. If used properly, there is no effect on the environment. So if we're gonna tell people to stay on the trail, maybe we should respect them enough to not lie to them. The reason is legality and insurance concerns. The other thing that you really wanna consider is that old people uh, who might, may or may not be employed anymore really don't have much to do and they like complaining. And I like complaining, I'm doing it right now, but I try to like keep some balance in my life and keep some perspective and listen to other opinions. Um, what's happening now is there are people who, if someone drives on their land and they see a snowmobile track and they're, they're allowing these snowmobile clubs to use their land, um, they get pissed off, again, because of potential insurance reasons, not land damage. And then they close the trail network. And then the clubs have to work really hard to try to find an alternate route to try to make the trails, you know, work. So I understand all that, and I'm not going to deny any of that. You legally should not be riding on other people's land. But again, it's not because you're damaging the land. It is because of insurance reasons. So in addition to just off-trail riding, the other types of complaints I see happen all the time are about people cutting corners. Now... I get it, you want people to stay on the trail, and when they cut corners, that pisses off the landowner, and again, we can lose access to that land for our trail networks. But, as we just established, snowmobiling doesn't hurt anything. And there has been this myth for so long that snowmobiling hurts crops, damages the ground, and that's why these landowners want you to run the trail network on the edges of their fields or like at a straight line. But most of the corners that I see being cut are not in the woods for obvious reasons. They're on the trails that are in fields. And I think a solution here would be to talk to that landowner and be like, look, 
I know you think snowmobiles hurt the ground. It turns out they don't. Here are the facts that, you know, will help you deal with your feelings. And if we don't want people to cut, maybe what we should do, instead of having like right angles and straights and then like another 90, people like to have smooth flowing trail networks, okay? Like they don't really like to just go straight and then slam on the brakes and make a 90 degree corner. Now that actually does damage the land, ironically. So you, these farmers think that, I want you to put the trail right on the edge of my field and have all these 90 degree corners. What happens is that that corner will get blown out because the sleds slow down so much to make that 90 degree corner that then when they come out of the corner, they pin it. That throws all the snow off the ground. Eventually, that corner is just gonna be down to the dirt. And then yes, the snowmobiles will actually damage the land. But if you set up the trail correctly where it's smooth corners, you're never gonna be pinning it from a stop and you're not going to dig down into the dirt. You're not going to damage the land. So hopefully, by just talking about this and educating people that snowmobiles don't damage land when used properly or when the trail network is designed properly, we'll have fewer problems. If all these 90s were big sweepers, riders would be less likely to cut corners and it'd be less likely to damage the land. This is a win-win. Uh, again, if you need the literature and the scientific studies that prove what I'm saying is correct, they're down in the description below, okay? The other problem is that when some idiots do this stuff, the rest of us are punished even if we're following the rules. And I, I get that it gives them a sense of power to be like, you guys better behave this year or I'm taking my land away from you. Yeah, they can legally do that. It's their land. I'm not debating that. But what I'm saying is really stupid is that I can't control other people, okay? Like there's always going to be some idiots in anything. You know, the vast majority of us are following the rules and not doing anything wrong. But because like one or two idiots breaks the rules, that landowner is going to take the land away from everyone else. It's really stupid. You're just being a dickhead. And if you really care that much, what clubs or the landowner should do is they should set up a trail cam and capture some footage of these people riding on private property, post it online. I'm sure you guys have seen stories on the internet of hit and runs where uh, the comment section identifies the vehicle by a scrap of a taillight reflector. And you're telling me that if someone gets a nice shot of a snowmobile, from the side, they can't identify that person? I don't think so, especially if there's an incentive to do so. The camera might not pick up the trail network, but everyone's gonna know whose sled that is unless they're from out of town, in which case they're not going to follow the rules anyway. So again, you are punishing everyone else for the actions of a few idiots. It doesn't make any sense. The other thing I wanted to talk about was off-trail riding in general. Now, there's been a huge explosion in the popularity of mountain sleds. And when you see all these videos of people riding off-trail in the Rockies or wherever, uh, people want to emulate that. It looks fun because it is fun to ride off-trail. Riding in powder is great. But there's currently not really a place for people to do this. And rather than just complaining and being angry and coming up with no solutions like one political party in this country, maybe we should just try to find ways to make things better. Maybe we should look for a solution. In this case, I wanna just look at a lateral market and a similar problem. People were annoyed with skateboarders, all right? Skateboarders were going through downtown and grinding on things. And so what did they do? The community worked with the local government to set aside a small part of land to create a skate park. What if, boys, the clubs and the local communities worked with our state to provide some land for off-trail use in more places? I mean, I don't really see how this is such an impossible ask. I don't remember the exact amount, but Wisconsin has a ton of state land available. And in the winter, most of it is not used. Uh, there's cross-country skiing trails, there's snowmobile trails, there's hiking trails. But there's not just any like general wide areas where you can go screw around for the most part. Now there are a couple exceptions way up north, I get it. But I'm just saying, maybe instead of complaining, we should think about opening up more open areas for off-trail use. I think that it would probably solve a lot of the issues. Maybe they should have a place to do it. I don't know. I don't really have a point to this. I just wanted to make a snowmobile video. I can't go snowmobiling. I'm annoyed by what I see online. so. This was my rant. Hopefully it rustled some jimmies. If you guys learned anything, leave a like and a comment. If you're pissed, definitely leave a comment. I would love to argue with you. All right? Cheers, boys. Pray for snow. Hopefully I get out there because, yeah, this is driving me freaking crazy.